Hey everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Here I've got a question on um, joint PDF, X and Y are continuous random variables. Here you go. I want to find the expected value of X times Y squared. I want to give you two solutions to this. And one of them is going to be wrong. Okay, first solution. I say this. Expected value of x, y squared x, y squared x plus y dy by dx, say, not using the definition of a expected value of a f function of random variables and now I integrate iterated integration first this says I integrate respect to y get the answer to that then I integrate the whole that thing expression with respect to x so that's that bit then it's straightforward integration isn't it um, and when we're doing this even though they're two variables if we're integrating respect to y it means that the other variable is held fixed so imagining x just to be x just to be um, a fixed number and so not to confuse us some of us like to write underneath it may be x and y just to remind us otherwise we start substituting in the wrong numbers we start substituting for uh, what x instead of y here all right so I just do that so you're quite clear what I am gonna substitute for so what I have is x squared a third of that plus a quarter of x uh, by the way, I'm not promising I've got right results. Uh, I don't do any algebraic slip-ups here, but um, you check. Um, so it's y, isn't it? We're substituting for between 1 and 0. Some of us instead like to write, say, here y equals to 1, y equals to 0. Whatever you like, you know, as long as you know what to substitute for. Then I'm going to have a third x squared plus a quarter x dx see nothing new from this step really for you and then we do the integration and that 1 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 8 is equal to 17 over 72 okay that's one answer Second answer is like this. I use this idea. I say, look, isn't expected value of x times y square uh, equal to e x times e y square? And we just obtain this one, obtain this one, multiply them together, done. How do I get this thing? Uh, this thing we get by integrating x over f of x over dx. Uh, I'm going to suppose you work this through for margin of x. I've kind of shown you how to do it in a previous video. So what do we end up with? So over x is between 0 to 1. I'll put over all x here. Right, well x is between 0 and 1. And we have x squared plus half x dx. Right, I've not shown you, oops, I've not shown you how to get f of x because I'm assuming you can do that. Okay, but I'm supposing this is right. And then what we have from here, calculating this, we're going to get 7 over 12 ey squared. ey squared is going to be integral of the whole of y of y squared f of y dy and the values it can take here for y is between 0 and 1. Uh, what we have here is uh, y squared and the f of y, I'm going to put in brackets so you can check it, uh, y plus a half dy. And you calculate that thing, what do you get? 5 over 12. So I have 5 over 12. So therefore you would say expected value of x times y squared equals, this is, okay, this is what we wrote before up there, then you go, oh, 7, 12 times 5 
over 12 equals 35 over 144. All right, is that the same as what I got before? Uh, no, it's not, because I've got 17 over 72. So which one is right? Uh, I can't gauge what you're thinking. I can't ask you to show your hands because I can't see what you're doing. So for all I know you're doing, you're drinking a kind of beer while you're watching this. Um, so I'll just tell you, uh, this here is wrong. Uh, I've told you where it's wrong. It's wrong right here. Uh, and I've done, previously done a video on this before, but um, I asked this on another video and I showed why in general it is not true. Uh, this is this true in general? No. On, uh, true only if the covariance of x and y is equal to zero. Or a stronger condition if x and y are independent. This thing here, therefore, because it's not turned out to be the same thing, it must be that x and y are not independent. Let's just state this result. If x, important result, you see, this is y. See, if x and y are mutually independent, then any function of x will be independent of any function of y. And that means the expected value or let's say a function of x and a function of y could be two different functions. So a function, expected value of a function of x times a function of y, this is the result, will be equal to the product of the individual expectations. And in the answer here, that is what you you assumed it. All right. Let's just say that the function g for x here is just the identity, it doesn't do anything to x, whereas the function on y here is a squared, takes y and squares it. And because we've got a different answer to the first one, uh, I've just told you that this is wrong, it must mean that x and y are not independent. How do we check for this case that they're independent? We have to recall that x and y are independent, mutually independent if here the joint PDF is equal to the product of their marginal PDFs. We are told what the joint PDF is. It's x plus y. And we can kind of see what the marginal of x is here. The marginal of x, oh, I kind of multiply through by x already. The marginal for x, this guy here, is x plus a half, isn't it? and y is y plus a half. Uh, if you multiply fx and fy together, clearly you do not get x plus y, the joint PDF of x and y. So hence x and y not uh, independent. And you can't go doing this. Mm, but independence is a very strong condition. We don't need really independence so long as um, the covariance of x here and y squared is zero, oh, this would work. So beware of taking the expectation of products of things. And this is especially the case is true if you're going to deal with something like time series data, where the stuff are going to be dependent on each other. Okay, so that just about does it. Um, thanks for watching and um, hope you do better in your homework now.